in a logic sampler it's pretty just straightforward you can't mm-hmm. really edit in that sampler mm-hmm. but it has the the slice link like in the mpc you know how it locks so yeah. when you move one slice the other slice is affected I asked multiple people what, you know, how do you edit these? And nobody knew. Everyone just told me the same thing, that it's literally just a basic sampler. You put your chops in and that's it. You're stuck with them. And I'm like, there's no way. So this video is going to show everyone how to do that. At least nine people I talked to. They were like, everyone just told me the same thing, that it's literally just a basic sampler. You put your chops in and that's it. You're stuck with them. And I'm like, there's no way. So this video is going to show everyone how to do that. What you do is basically after you do your chops like this, you got to make a a drum designer track. And let me bring up that picture. Okay. So you see how it says create drum machine designer track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. So after you lay the slices you want, however you want, I think in this one, I just chose equal divisions. Mm Mm-hmm. Then you have to go and make that the drum machine designer track. And once you do that, you can go in and edit all of this now. So in this video we're about to air, we're going to show everyone how to do that and how I personally sample and edit them because nobody knew. And then I, what I did was I took this video and showed the people that I asked mm-hmm. and they were mind blown. They were like, what? We didn't know you could do that. Only one per actually shout out um J1 Star Beats Shadow Bear. Only Jay knew that. He thought of when I hit him, he was like, nah, you can't do it. But then me and him started thinking and talking about it. And he was like, mm-hmm. maybe you gotta do it through the drum machine. And I was like, You're right. Like, you know, we started thinking about it, like maybe you can do mm-hmm. it through there. It just doesn't make sense to me that they wouldn't let us do that from the get go. Uh, you, you know, but the the weird thing about it to me is that like I don't know how, but like I never really like between like and I never really use logic that heavy. But like even in GarageBand, like GarageBand was always like trying to get a sample in there was always it always mm-hmm. seemed like a little bit difficult. You know what I mean? Like if and if you wanted to chop it, you almost had to chop it on the actual timeline. You know what I'm right. saying? And then take the little pieces and move them around if you could. But like um, I don't know, it just seemed to me like the Apple was never really like with the whole sampling thing like that anyway. You know what I mean? Like, so. Facts. So can and you, that's, that's the feel I got from this. So can you load My it bad, back up ahead. on another sampler? Can you, like, after you do the um, edits on drum, on the drum designer track, can you load it back up in the, in the first sampler? Well, what it does is, this is the cool thing about it. When you do go to that create drum track, mm-hmm. it puts a whole MIDI pattern of everything broken down on a new track for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you don't even have to reload it. But yes, you can resample and do all of that. Like, you know, there's little workarounds to the resampling Mm -hmm. and stuff, but Mm -hmm. yes, you can do that. But there wouldn't be no reason to really load that back into the quick sampler. But you can do it, it it is possible. Yeah, I was just wondering, like if it's chops or something, if it's not drums, would it it be better to, you know, what if somebody wanted to load it? I'm just, just asking questions, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because it makes sense though, because this also has a feature in the quick sampler where it just gets the transients. So when it's drums, you really just need that and you're good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You don't even have to go yeah. into create a, because transient's going to pick it up. If you want to move something, it's not going to, even though it'll affect the next slice, if it's drums, you're just going to get, you know what I mean? The end of it, which mm-hmm. is probably dead anyway, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, um, okay. So I'm going to show you how I sample, how I use the quick sampler. When you open Logic Pro on the iPad, you get all your projects, even your GarageBand projects will be in here. So you wanna click the plus, this will bring you to the main screen. We'll get into all this other stuff later, but you wanna add a new track. Now, when you pull this up, you we're gonna add MIDI, but I just wanna show you quickly, if you tap on any of these three dots on any of these, it'll bring your defaults up. And I already have mine set to Quick Sampler, but, um, Normally it'll be on none and you get to pick which one you want. And I'll just show you briefly all the items that options that you have here to pick from. I mean, you could even pick instruments and and plug in some other apps. So 
So yeah, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pick MIDI. And you know, it's a, it's a similar layout to GarageBand. You know, it looks just like GarageBand. So if you're familiar with that, you have your, you know, your basic functions up here and your snaps, you know, tempos, everything you need here. And your looper. You know, it all works the same. This down here is your browser. So what you can do, if you want to use sounds from the logic itself, you can come into your browser and run through all of this. There's tons of sounds. Now, if you don't want to use your browser, close that out. I'll just go and show you the info where you can, um, you know, set up all your settings or whatever, colors, anything you want, your MIDI. channel mixer strip so that you can see your levels down here you have your editor you can open it up and set it to whatever you want just take this uh when you go to snap take the auto off if you want to change it to whatever you want click that off now this is where your actual sampler is going to be and when you go to bring your sound in these i'll explain more when you go to bring your sound in it'll be in here but you have your MIDI effects, audio effects, your sends. We'll get to all of that in another episode. I'll just show you everything quickly, all the options you have. So if you were using a sound from InLogic, you could just come to your browser again and pull them over. I'm gonna show you how to use sounds outside of Logic. So you're just gonna close this Logic out, come to your Files app. You're gonna open that up, click the three buttons on the top and hit Slide Over. And then you go back to Logic Pro, open it up, and then swipe the screen and bring in the Files app. And from there, you can just grab your, your sample and drag it over. You, you could drag it to the track, you could drag it right into the sampler, or you could drag it here. Once you click over here, you'll be able to open up your sampler. And, you know, it's cool. You could drag all this, make it bigger, close things. So I'm going to drag this up. Now here we have the classic mode. You could go ahead and trim it down or whatever you want to do. The cool thing about it, it automatically detects the starts and the finish of where the sound is. So it'll set the, the chop for you. Uh, we'll just literally go across the whole thing and show you. It detects the root note. Here you have, you pull up your piano right here. So this will play the sample straightforward as you see it's on forward and not reverse it'll play it you can hit the keys it'll show you the different pitches of it um same thing with reverse and this is also where you can um loop loop forward drag your ends to where you want them You could fade your sounds in and out right here. Uh, we'll play a reverse loop. It'll come back. The alternate is like a ping pong. Okay, I'm going to take that off and drag these back and we'll go into one shot. It'll just play it through. When you're on classic, you have to hold it for it to play. One shot just plays it through. I'm just going to come over here really quick and put on mono or one voice so that the keys aren't playing together. And, and that's just basic. Then we'll go to the slicer now. We'll go to slice. Now over here is where your snap will be on your slices. And it's, this is pretty cool. You could put it on transient and note. So it will detect where the transient starts. So if you slice it up a different way, it'll lock it on that. This is just to zoom it, zoom in. Same thing with the sideways. If you had it blown up, you could zoom in and out. Now down here, 
it's on transient and note. So you see next to it is the sensitivity. You could choose how sensitive you wanted to pick that up. And then we have equal divisions. Beat divisions. You can come over here and, and have a million slices and change it up to what you want. One eighth, one sixteenth. But back to what I use, if I don't do it manually, it's going to be equal division. So this is a four bar loop. So I'll just chop it to sixteenths. As you see, it says sixteenths, but you can change it. You could put as many slices as you want in this. You know, the gate feature, they have the gate feature. We have to hold it to play. play the end it'll keep playing once you hit a key so, you know these are options that are up to you now over here you have your uh, flex pitch and your follow tempo which will you know put it all in the same tempo as the project for you Now I'm going to get into more details on the flex pitch on another episode. So I just want to break down how to sample really quickly because I see a lot of people having problems with using the sampler on here. And this right here is a cool feature. It's a, uh, you can half time the speed or double time it if you want. You can change up the speed. Now, before I get into manual slicing, which is just simple, um, I'm going to explain the things below this for you, how to change the pitch and everything. You have your LFO section. If you're familiar with like Beatmaker 3 and some of these other apps, you know, this is where you could come in and really, you can really do some creative things. You could sound design in here with your LFOs and all of that. Now, I'm not going to get into that right now. I just want to show you the basics. But yeah, like a lot of people, like you could bring your 808s in here and we'll get into that into another episode as well. But let's go to the pitch. So now to change your pitch would be this knob right here. And it also has a fine tune. So let's just mess with it a little bit so you can hear it. And the pitch also has its own ADS, which is cool. And you could click on attack only. And pretty much everything in here has its own ADS settings. So. You know, that's where you do your pitching, right here. Over here, we have your filter. Again, basic filter setup. Right here is where you pick which filter you'd like to add. And over here on your amp, you have your pan. And if you double click any button, it'll reset like most apps um, over here, your, your mono. This one is your main level volume right here. And in here in your ADS settings right here is your velocity. If you want to pull this all the way down, full volume. So we'll click in here and go right to the attack and raise that up a little bit. And you just close this out to get back to the, the main screen. And again, you can also add effects to these chops right here. We'll get into that in another episode, but you have your MIDI effects and audio effects. Okay, so let's get to the recording part you just want to come here now you can do this so you could just hit record and go but if you create a new pattern here a midi pattern you can you know preset your quantize or whatever you want so you just click here double click this so if you're using a mouse you could even right click on this and edit and you see right here in your info is all your um quantize settings or whatever you want to set up now you could just go ahead and record right into that. If you want to go ahead and you know, be a different 
section, simple two. So yeah, that's how easy the sample is to use on Logic Pro for the iPad. I know a lot of people get confused because they don't, you know, know where it's at. They don't know how to load it up. So hopefully this will help anybody that was having any problems. This is just the way I do it again. I'm going to show you now manually. There's other ways to do it as well, but this is the way I do it. And so manually, you just go ahead and you click whichever slices you want. Okay, you see this bar is your info bar for each slice. You could just X out of it if you need to, but... When you're on it, first of all, to get to it, you just click one of your slices right here. If you want to delete it or move it, you can just drag it. And then you see in the info bar, you could delete it right here. And just X out of it when, you, when you're when you done. So your manual, manual is pretty easy. It's the same way every other sampler works, pretty much. And just quickly, let me show you this. On the keyboard, you can actually, let me pull the keyboard up. You can actually just set it to... Uh, only white keys, only black keys, or both if you want it chromatic. So you see the black keys won't play if it's on white and vice versa. So I know you guys are like, all right, why when I go to move or edit my slices, they move together almost like uh, link slices would on MPC. So it's a little tricky. You have to, I'm going to show you exactly what you have to do because you cannot do it in this quick sampler. So you're going to come over here to uh, these three dots and you want to come down you see you have a bunch of options here but you want to go into functions and then in functions you want to come down to create the drum machine design designer track now I know you're probably like why didn't we just start with the drum machine designer track but it doesn't work that way for some reason maybe you know in the future they'll update it where it's a little simpler but so once you do that, you'll see your, your little pattern will pop up here with all the MIDI in it and everything, and then you'll get drum pads down here. Now you can go in and edit these individually and change up and move your slices around. So come over here, bring up the quick sampler again, uh, click on whatever pad you want to edit, then click on your quick sampler, and now you could go ahead and move your your end points and your start points without having to worry about the other slice being affected. And you can fade in here as well, fade them out and in. Yeah, just don't be afraid to, you know, click into everything and see what it does. You have all these options. I know it's a bit of a workaround to be able to edit these, but that's how you do it. You know, if, if you're determined to use this, this program, this app, this is how you do it. And you don't have to use the pads. You can use the keyboard. Um, you could even use the guitar strips. You can put these on anything. Also, with this with this pattern that it's automatically laid out, you can just hit it and get to like your submixes and everything is right there. And again, I know a lot of people are confused. I was confused myself on how to do this. So I, I hope this video helps you out. Let us know what you think below in the comments. Uh, let us know what else you want to see and what we can, you know, maybe show you guys. Let me ask you, so that, that, or doing that, what you said, like, that, how's that, like, how does that work into, like, your workflow? Does that, does that, does it slow, you feel like it slows down or, or like, have you done it so many times at this point where you like, oh, it's second nature? It was coming to second nature, but uh -huh. the fact that I have to stop and do that is time consuming. And yeah, it does, it, it makes me want to just go to the easy Koala or Beatmaker mm -hmm. 3, you know what I mean? And even yeah. like Beatmaker 3 is a very in-depth app and you have to do a lot to get to a lot. Mm -hmm. But this beats that 20 times. This is so in-depth. There's so many different things you have to push and go into. Nothing yeah. is easy to find. Oh, that sucks. Right. So, like I said, I was stumped on this for a minute. 
Yeah, it sounds like almost bonus. like an NPC. It has the NPC chopping features, but like it seems like too many menus or too much transition right. between samplers to get it. Mm-hmm. That's the best way you could put it. And that's what it reminded me of. You know how in the NPC where you could like link slices and lock them? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. So I'm like, no, there's no way. There has to be a way that, you know, you can edit these. Because, yeah, GarageBand, like you said before, Cheese, it is, it wasn't sampler friendly, but this yeah. beats, Logic definitely beats the GarageBand sampler any day. It's way more in depth. Like, Y'all know the GarageBand sampler, they, they, I don't even know why they call that a sampler. That, that's a sample <laughs> player. Like, it's, it's, I, that thing is terrible. Um, oh, fuck. But, I mean, it is what it is. Um, uh, what was I going to ask you? Um, you uh, so I, I, I mean, I assume because you could do it in GarageBand, you can open up uh, um, AV3s and uh, Logic on iPad too, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And right. the cool thing about it, yeah, like you can just start with a track mapped out like that. Mm-hmm. You could set it default if you want to, because it that that's dope, dope, dope. dope. That feature in this Logic is amazing because there's so many different options. I just think people are going to get lost in it's so much to do. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So many mm-hmm. different, but you know we'll cover it here and there. We'll we'll go through each step. Again, this is just the way that I've been sampling on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, it's the workaround that I I came up with to just try to edit my my because I'm not just a I don't just set chops and leave it. I always got to go in there and you know play with it or whatever. Yeah, you but, make it your own. Right, right, right. But um. You know, it's not bad if you get used to it. It's cool. It does, like I said, that extra step is time consuming. So it mm-hmm. does kind of make me want to just go back to the easy samplers. But does it got time stretch? Yes, it does. Has so you, you time yeah, stretch using drum designer? Garage. Huh? You time stretch it in d- drum designer? You just change the tempo on it and it fits? Yes, I believe you can. I'll let you know for sure right now. I'm going to pull it up. How much is it monthly? Five dollars. It's 50 a year and five dollars a month. So. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah it's not like making or breaking that. me. Yeah, I still cancel down. Yeah, so you can also time stretch in the um in the drum designer track because, like I said, it makes it literally makes a pattern with everything in there for you. All the notes are in there for you. Just simple, you know, where you could drag and just. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I like to, I like that time. That's how you time stretch on. Uh... Too. Yeah, yeah, I like that time stretch too. It's just easy, you know. It's, it makes your workflow mm-hmm. go quick. Yeah. What I do yeah. like when you do put this into the drum designer track, it gives you the submixes. So once you hit that one track, all your stuff is laid out separately. Also, mm-hmm. Cubasis can do that too. But this automatically does it for you. This automatically does it. So your kick, you know, your snare or your chop one, uh-huh. chop two, everything will be out in submix, like all there for you, separated. Mm. You can put plugins yeah, on I, top. You can put plugins on those. Tons. You could put all type of. Like effects. right on the snare Plug- only, like on yep. each. End. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Like Ableton, yeah, yeah, because it separates. It, it puts them in its own track. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you could add all type of stuff right on top each track, or just one track if you want, or the main. You know what I mean? The the whole main mix. That I, I will give it that is really good. Like the mixer and, and all of that, they really thought that out well, and, and that that's really good in Logic. Like it gives me that Cubasis because Cubasis was the only other one that did it like that. Yeah, and when Koala made that semi, you know, the, the new functionality is kind of like that too. You know, like at least mm-hmm. breaking it down into four pieces. You know, 